Last night during the opening ceremonies of our encampment, I referred to the Roman Missal as the dangerous book for men. And the reason is because everything that our Lord has done for us to save us from our sins, not because we were his friends, but really in spite of ourselves, is enshrined in the holy sacrifice of the Mass. Every day we celebrate the heroism of Christ. And if we think about it, our Lord truly went into battle on Calvary. Sometimes the crucifix is um, portrayed with a, a skull, sometimes the, actually even a skull and crossbones at the foot of the cross. Uh, a lot of the old uh, crucifixes that were on religious habits had the skull and bones on the, on the bottom part of the cross under our Lord's feet. <clears throat> And that seems kind of strange probably for many people, but the tradition is that our Lord uh, was on Calvary, where, where our Lord was crucified, was actually right over uh, Adam's tomb. It's an apocryphal tradition, sometimes it upheld by the, uh, by the fathers of the church. But the, the cross was over the tomb of Adam. <clears throat> so the skull and crossbones is a sign of the mortality of Adam. And, and by and through Adam, all the rest of us. And the reason that Adam died uh, is because of the original sin. And in the, in the garden of paradise, where Adam and Eve stood at the foot of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, they encountered uh, the serpent, uh, who was actually pretty much a monster who was there to destroy them. And Adam was not there to protect his wife. Uh, Eve entered into dialogue with the devil and fell. And then she came and tempted Adam and, and he fell. And, and then he blamed her. Uh, and she blamed the serpent. And they all started to run, you know, as soon as they had discovered that they were naked and they're filled with shame for their sinfulness, they all ran for cover, you know, or ran from, from taking responsibility from their actions. And our Lord would have none of it. So he promised a redeemer, promised that someone would undo this disobedience and this, this coward, cowardice. Uh, and that was the woman and her seed <clears throat> that God, you know, the Lord God promised at the very beginning of sacred history, immediately after Adam and Eve had fallen. So the fathers tell us that God provided us with a new Adam and a new Eve and, a new, uh, and, and, and the tree of life so that in the garden of the resurrection, the garden where, where Calvary is, our Lord entered into battle with the serpent. Instead of allowing his bride, the church, in the person of our Blessed Mother, to be attacked, our Lord himself went into battle to defend his bride. And his bride was there at the foot of the cross uh, supporting him and lifting him up to the Father. Uh, so neither one of them ran and neither one of them blamed anyone for the situation. They offered themselves for the salvation uh, of all. And, and as Catholics, this is what we're supposed to do. When we come to Mass, it's not just merely a matter of doing our duty or coming before the altar and offering some kind of generic worship which is pleasing to God. We come to the altar because Jesus himself is the priest and the victim. He is the one who goes into battle and he offers himself. And we, as members of the church, come to the altar and also offer that sacrifice. The priest at the altar, the, the ordained minister, offers that sacrifice in a unique way because without his offering, there's no sacrifice uh, sacramentally uh, 
enacted on the altar and there's no sacrament. But all of those who are baptized are called to come before the altar and offer Jesus to the Father. And we're called to unite our own sacrifices with those of our Lord and lift those up to the Father as well. And we, sit, we look at our Lord and we see him and his heroism. We see how he, the night before he died, he wanted to impress, upon, press, upon, press this upon us so, so deeply that he celebrated the Last Supper, the first Mass, before he actually died on the cross. And he had told his apostles to do this in memory of him. And it's not just a memory of something in the past. It's a commemoration. We make it present right now, sacramentally, through the Eucharist. And, and our Lord continues to reveal his heroism to us. This is, that's why I call it the dangerous book for men, because our Lord enshrined this heroism in the Mass. And if we understand what the Mass is, then we will want to participate in that heroism. That's what we do when we come to Mass. That's what we're supposed to be doing. We're supposed to be offering a sacrifice. We're supposed to be lifting up our duties and the difficulties that we encounter in, in, in fulfilling our duties to the Father. And the strange thing, among all the followers of Christ, among all the followers of Christ uh, who were called to this, it is a woman who does it better than anyone else. Our Lady's heroism brought her to the cross, brought her to the point where she had to surrender her son to this mystery, to this sacrifice, on behalf of people who didn't deserve it. None of us deserved it. And yet Our Lady surrendered her son uh, to his executioners because she knew that this was the obedience that he had come for and it was the obedience that she was called to. And so we turn to our Blessed Mother as the strong woman from Proverbs uh, who uh, teaches us all uh, the gift of fortitude. And it's a gift that um, we all have in our hearts because of baptism and confirmation, uh, but which we have to uh, bring bring from the depths uh, by uniting our lives to Christ in the holy sacrifice uh, of, of the Mass. So, as we participate today in the Mass and receive Holy Communion, we should ask our Blessed Lady and our Lord for the grace uh, to take that risk and to open ourselves up to the mystery of salvific suffering. That's the teaching of the Church. Suffering in union with Jesus uh, is redemptive and it changes not only our own personal lives, it changes the reality in which we live, it changes the world, it changes our families, it changes the state of people's souls. And God is looking for us to be his true knights. He's looking for us to stand up and be counted and to do that more than anything else by, by carrying our cross. Our Lord carried the staff of the cross and he separated the waters of the Red Sea and we have passed through and that's, that's baptism. And he has redeemed us by the sword of the cross and uh, that's where we find our own redemption and our own grace. So as we continue to celebrate this vote of mass in honor of our Blessed Lady, let us also ask the strong woman who is at the foot of the altar now with us to enliven our faith and our courage so that we always remain with our Lord in this mystery.